that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. President after president, party after party, after me. the peaceful transition of power that in today's world can be hard to find. Democrats say that's all at risk. They say President Trump won't take the loss. He'll destroy America just to keep his power. The president would not commit to a peaceful transition of power. This is not something that we expect to hear in the United States. But don't they know? We haven't had a peaceful transition of power since 2008. Because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. We lost the essence of America the day President Trump was elected. Because it all started on day one. The Russian collusion, the protests, the marches, the allegations, the rumors, the riots. Obama is the only president who has refused to leave D.C. The road ahead will be long. Our climb will be steep. We may not get there in one year or even in one term. He stayed there with his allies, planning, masterminding, and building an underground network to resist this presidency. I've shown you the past color revolutions and how they began. I've shown you how it's playing out here, right now. But now, we look to the future. Because this has been a war game. They've been planning it for a long while now. This is what they say will happen on election night. Tonight, Civil War, the left's election night war game. Hello, America. Welcome to the program. I, I want to talk to you tonight about a couple of documents. And I want to start off with this because what I'm going to show you is something I hoped I'd never have to do. I started this series with that, that feeling. This is the show I never wanted to do. I believe these documents you could, at least this document, could be used in the court of law, I think, to show treason. This is the document that uh, Barack Obama funded, and we'll talk about it here. This actually is a document that says the Tea Party was successful. And they have, they've used everything against Trump based on this document uh, to get people out into the streets. And I'll show you this in a minute. But what I'm going to show you tonight is worse when you read it firsthand. When you actually look at this document it is, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Do not take anything I say at face value. I don't want your trust, nor do I need your trust. I think I can only gain trust when you check everything that I say. And if I get it wrong, I apologize and correct it. But we're not wrong. This is, this is from them. And it will show you exactly What's coming? Let me take you where we were in the last episode. To destroy America, the free market, and the Western way of life, what you need to do is have a bottom-up, top-down kind of revolution. A color revolution is what the State Department and the, the uh, CIA calls it. This is what I call Red November. Because it's going to be red with either fires, red with communists, or Donald Trump is going to sweep, and it will be read that way. But what they've done, and we took you through it, these seven steps. The first one is you have to have a semi-autocratic. You have to be able to say, that guy's Hitler. We have that. Then you have to have an unpopular leader. The most unpopular of all time. Then you have to have the media prepare for election fraud. Did you notice what happened in the debate? During the debate, will you accept these results? Hillary Clinton herself said, we're not going to give up, and I will show you in their own documents what they have planned. Then we start here. I'm going to show you the future. This is happening now. I've shown you the past on where it all came from, but let me show you the future. On election night, 
you're going to hear things like this election isn't over. This is uh, this is a long way to go. We can't declare a winner. That is planned. And I'll show you the documents. That's something new in America. I'd like to just point out, remember, like they think we can't remember anything from four years ago. Then they have the um, indie media. Already they're working, softening you up, saying there's going to be election fraud. There's going to be all kinds of problems. Then the independent media, along with social media uh, and the mainstream media, will begin to say there's something wrong. There's integrity, problem with the integrity. We should call in the National Guard. I'll show you these steps tonight. They're going to seem spontaneous unless you read these documents and share them with your friends. Then you have the spontaneous uprisings, just like in Egypt. Then you get to this point where you have to split the government and the military. And I'm going to show you tonight how they're doing it with the National Guard. The the Democrats have already spoken about calling in the National Guard at this point. It's all in their plan. Democrats will call out the National Guard to stop Donald Trump. Then you have the riots right here. Because anarchy is ruling. And the riots are right here. So at the seat of power, somebody's got to come down. If it's Donald Trump, that just proves he's a totalitarian uh, dictator. But if it's not, who could possibly come down? The benevolent other side, the deep state that has everybody in place. They're, they're autocrats. The, the nation runs by itself now. We don't really need a president. The Great Reset will come. Agenda 23rd, the, uh, 2030, power and money. That's all they care about. They don't even care about the people that they say they are supporting and shoving money up to all these people. They don't care. These people are worthless to them. They're expendable. They just want the money and power and they will come down and kill them. Because that's what happens in revolutions. All you have to do is read a history book. That sounds crazy. Sounds like treason. Please. I, I want you to listen with an open mind for your friends. What I'm showing you is planned out in advance. I've been laying this out over the last two weeks. Members of the Obama administration, the State Department, they wrote the playbook for color revolution in the streets. We've seen it play, over, play out over the last three years in our own uh, country, and it actually culminates the week of the election. I pray to God that we do not get what we deserve. I pray to God we have another chance and none of this happens. But there is no getting around the fact that multiple scenarios have already been game planned for election night. There is no compromise here. It's either they get into office or they destroy us. Pillars one through four all set up. Tonight, I'm going to show you what they have planned for the future. This is something you need to share with your friends. And if they need to be brought up to speed, please just join us at Blaze TV. Everything is on demand. All of this stuff is explained over the last year. All of these specials that we have done, it's all there. You just have to watch them and put them together. And you're like, oh, my gosh, it's insane what's happening. We have an offer code, Save Our Democracy, and you get 20% off at blaze.com slash Glenn. Please support us because if I'm right, it's going to be very hard for anyone to get this information come election day. All right. As I pointed out for over a year now regarding Ukraine, everything always comes back to the relationship between high-ranking Democrats and spooky dude George Soros. This document serves as Doc Brown's DeLorean. It takes us back into time and it also goes forward into the future. 
This is the left's election night playbook prepared by an organization called the Transition Integrity Project. You might have heard it described as, oh, this is completely bipartisan. Really? Well, the founder is a woman named Rosa Brooks. She's a law professor and a columnist that actually worked for the Pentagon from 2009 to 2011. And it should be no surprise that one of her old bosses was George Soros. I mean, it's, I mean, it's almost laughable at this point. Really? Really? Now, I'm going to show you here an email that was part of the Podesta hack revealed by WikiLeaks. Brooks emailed Podesta, referencing a meeting that they both attended with George Soros. She ended up with an offer of help, quote, let me know if there's anything I can do to be helpful to you and Jake. Well, Jake is Jake Sullivan, who worked for Joe Biden when he was vice president, also Hillary Clinton. And now he's back with Biden as part of his team. So we, here we have Brooks and the Transition Integrity Project, who claim to be totally nonpartisan. How's that happening? Attending bigwig meetings with Democrats at George Soros's house and offering their help to both John Podesta and Jake Sullivan. Was producing the preventing a disrupted presidential election and transition document part of that support? Well, I showed you last week the left used that research to war game everything they're planning to do on election night. That organization that convened the war game was a group called Fight Back Table. It was convened, organized, and paid for by George Soros. Again, they don't even hide it. This is George Soros's organization, Democracy Alliance where they proudly boast that the fight back table is their initiative. This is entirely a Soros run operation. His former employee who still attends high level meetings with both him and top Democrats wrote the playbook and the Soros organization sponsored the war game. Now the event was split between two sides, team Trump and team Biden. Take a note of some of the participants here because you're sure to hear from them on TV November 3rd, 4th, 5th, 7th in January as this thing keeps going on. On the GOP side, attendees included people like Bill Kristol and the former RNC chairman Michael Steele, both stab us in the back traitors. Now, that should tell you everything you need to know about the Lincoln Project for sure. They're teaming up with Democrats and they're in league with George frickin Soros. Hello. By the way, George Soros doesn't practice Judaism and I don't care who you were born as, where you were born. I don't care if you're a Frisbetarian and you believe your soul gets trapped on your roof and you can't get it down. I don't care. This is not about persons. It's not about their religion. It's not about their, their uh, ethnic background. George Soros is evil, period. Now, Republicans also had the former Kentucky Secretary of State, Trey Grayson, in attendance. Guess where he's been writing op-eds uh, and what he's been writing about lately? Yeah, how mail-in voting is so crucial this year. The hubris of this group is insane. I don't think I've ever seen such a blatant and obvious conspiracy just laid out for the entire world to see. It is amazing. You can find this yourself and the New York Times still says it's a conspiracy. It's all for Team Biden. Well, he was represented on Team Biden uh, by people like John Podesta and the former DNC chairman Donna Brazile. But it also included multiple other participants from various backgrounds. Really important. Listen to this. According to their own words, other participants included political strategists, journalists, polling experts, tech and social media experts, and former career officials from the intelligence community, the Justice Department, and the military, oh, and the Department of Homeland Security. Deep State Central. I don't even know where to start with all of that. They all sound bat crap crazy, right? 
But let's center in on the journalist and social media, because that goes directly to pillar number five. Enough independent media to inform citizens about the falsified vote. I mean, it's a meme at this point to criticize the mainstream media on their bias. We all know it exists, that they're comfortably in bed with the left, but there is a lot more going on here than just your typical left-wing bias. This is a new phase. This is a revolutionary phase. Look at the cover-up at any mention at all on any of this that is currently happening. Watch Newt Gingrich. He mentioned the holy name of George Soros and immediately got shut down on Fox. The New York Times, just what, last week or before, just two weeks ago, called me a conspiracy theorist for talking about Soros' influence over the media. Where's the conspiracy? It's well known that Soros funds David Brock and Media Matters with millions. It's there. Brock has bragged about his organization directly influencing the media. This is an excerpt from a leaked email released by WikiLeaks. They bragged that they conducted, quote, over 900 on-the-record and off-the-record media interviews and sent 80 sets of talking points, backgrounds, materials, and briefings on topical issues. 372 surrogates, including influential and frequent pundits on broadcast and cable news. It also sent media advisories and talking points to 960 members of the national media and 10,756 regional reporters in 2018 states and to 369 television producers and bookers. Soros has the financial ties to more than 30 major news organizations. NPR was even caught by Project Veritas of trying to cover up their relationship with George Soros. This is how you buy the media and control the narrative. This gives George Soros and the left the ability to cover anything they want. Have you noticed nobody is talking about probably the biggest scandal in our country's history? What Barack Obama was briefed on. We have the notes now on how Hillary Clinton was suspected of concocting a, some sort of uh, master plan where Donald Trump would be accused of, of being in bed with Russia. They knew it. We have the documents. It came out yesterday. Where is that? That wasn't even in the debate yesterday. They still say that's not true. Why? Because they control the media. And if it didn't happen with them on NBC, well, it just didn't happen. Did you see this from Fox or Vox? They're actually trying to say that I, we are the ones setting the stage for revolution. Please come in. Let me tell you something. I pointed out that Barack Obama, I said, was a racist. No, that's not quite right. He just, he seems to have a deep-seated hatred for the white culture. Oh, Glenn Beck is a racist. Wait, I just pointed out that he seems to have a problem with the white culture. What is that called? That's now known as critical race theory. I was right. But I said, I think he's... He's a racist. No, that's not quite. And because, because I said that, I am a racist now. Let me get this straight. If I point out what the left is doing, I'm doing it? Wow, that's a whole new time zone I've never been in. We are entering a new ball game with the media. They clearly have their talking points, and you will see it play out all the way through election night. I'm going to post this at glenbeck.com. You can follow it day by day. Be the amazing Kreskin. They're going to call for the National Guard. Did you see how they all pounced last week over the claim that Trump wouldn't commit to a peaceful transition of power? It's so ridiculous, but almost every mainstream outlet picked it up and ran. They're acting as if Trump said he'd barricade himself in the White House if he lost. That's not what he said. He said there would be a continuation because of all of the mail-in ballots. That's literally the same thing the Democrats are saying. But they twisted Trump, Trump's response. It was a total setup and a question for all of them to immediately jump on. Look at this from page one of the Transition Integrity Projects report. Okay, page one. 
The concept of election night is no longer accurate and indeed is dangerous. We face a period of constant, I can't say, it. they're going to contest it, stretching from the first day a ballot is cast in mid-September until January 20th. The winner may not, and we assess likely will not, be known on election night as officials count mail-in ballots. So now what we've all grown up with, we're supposed to embrace that it's dangerous. What? Now that's basically the same thing that Trump was talking about because he knew. But with one key difference, the left is not concerned at all of the fraud surrounding mail-in ballots. They kick out at least 20 to 30 percent of all of the ballots every time with mail-in ballots. You do that, the left is going to say they're disenfranchising 20% of the vote. You can see it. In a sane environment, this would probably kick off a few warning bells, especially when you see things like this. Wow. <laughs> At the end of this trip, yes. there's three towers called one towers. Okay. And it's all seniors, and they took every ballot. Every ballot. They just every take them from them. Every single ballot. They knock on the door and say, your ballots come, give it to me, give it to me. They don't even pay them for it. They just take them. No. And the ones that didn't vote on ballots, the young people and the women and stuff, they were paying cash, cash, cash. They were getting bags of money the last one week here to, to, to drive people. Today, the New York Times said that that story... That story didn't show any illegalities, and it was just a whipped up story by the right. Okay, what about the military ballots cast for Trump that were discarded? These are just stories that were dropped over the last few days. New York, they, what was it? They had uh, double the number of ballots go out. There is no telling how bad this is gonna get, but the left isn't worried one bit. It's interesting. And if you're curious as what the media is preparing to do and lead up on election night, you need look no further than this piece from the Washington Post over the weekend. This is not a drill. The Reichstag is burning. I want you to listen to this. Try to hold your temper. Quote, it's abundantly clear that Trump plans to fabricate an election emergency. First, he claimed mail-in balloting, a tried and true system. No, it's not. It's fraudulent. Now his supporters are trying to harass in-person voters. Really? Shooting down all questions regarding the mail-in ballots is priority number one. Media priority number two is framing Trump's attempts to ensure the ballots are legitimate as a constitutional crisis. And priority number three, well, that's in here too. Let's look at the next quote. Let's be clear. There is only one political party in American politics embracing violence. There is only one side refusing to denounce all political violence. You know who they think that is? <laughs> they think the only ones that are violent are the Republicans. What world is this intended for? Republicans have convinced, uh, uh, condemned violence since day one. The Tea Party was never violent. It was the left that refuses to speak out against Antifa and BLM. In fact, the violence is part of their election night strategy, and blaming it on the right is also part of their plan. They're so arrogant, they write about it. I'll show you in a minute. All right, COVID-19, what does that have to do with losing your home? Actually, a lot. The FBI reported that since the virus struck, cybercrime is up 75%. But wait, there's more. It gets worse. The legal title to all of our homes are online. The crime is ho called home title theft, and it is everywhere. FBI said it's the fastest growing crime in New York. Cybercrime, well, that was before the riots. Cyber criminals uh, find the title to your home online. They forge your signature on a quick claim deed and refile it as the new owners of your home. And you're off the title. They have the title. Then they go into the bank. They take out a big loan. They give it to a dummy address. Well, after nobody's paid for it, then they, the bank comes, knocks on your door, and repossesses your house. You don't own it. 
Home Title Lock protects your home's legal title. Your home is the most valuable asset, your safe haven, your castle. Home Title Lock will put a virtual barrier around your home's title. Do it now. Go to Home Title Lock. First things first, HomeTitleLock.com. Register your address and see if you're already a victim. Then use code RADIO for 30 days of free protection. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. To cause a color revolution, you have to have seven pillars. And pillar six is where preparation turns into action. Quote, a political opposition capable of mobilizing tens of thousands or more demonstrators to protest electoral fraud. Do you remember how many people they put on the first day of the inauguration out on the street? The Democrats is that they are the political opposition. You need a network of fully trained and organized street soldiers to apply necessary bottom-up pressure for any of this to work. I am constantly amazed over all of the topics that I've covered over my career that we are now looking at all of them coming into play. The more we research what's happening right now are all the things we warned about. I remember watching the Arab Spring play out in places like Egypt and predicting the coming caliphate and the waves of civil unrest that would eventually make their way here. I also said that I think Facebook, this is social media. This, the, what happened is social media. I was laughed off and then they started to admit it. There goes crazy Glenn Beck again, but then the caliphate came and we now have rioting in our streets. Well, we later found out that the Obama State Department was training activists through Civil Society 2.0 and George Soros was working right alongside them. I remember watching Occupy Wall Street and seeing there is more of this to come. I'm going to show you the original ad that kicked off Occupy Wall Street. Notice what they list as their inspiration. Quote, are you ready for a Tahrir moment? Tahrir as in part of the Arab Spring that toppled the Egyptian government. The Arab Spring inspired Occupy. Occupy would become the inspiration for the national hub of left-wing activists, the Action Network. This is the hub for nearly almost every major street movement over the past several years. The Sunrise Movement pushing the New Green Deal with AOC. The left's push to end the Electoral College. Black Lives Matter. The Women's March. The Ferguson protest that spun out of control into riots and on and on and on. Now, the Action Network was started by a former John Kerry staffer, his name being Brian Young, when he was frustrated that Occupy Wall Street fizzled out. There he is in a private plane, or is that a, is that a tour bus? Quote, they had a lot of events. They had a lot of great attention for around two months, and then it just kind of faded. A platform like ours could really have kept it alive. Well, that's what they're doing now. The Action Network is like the new and improved Tides Foundation. They are the focal point, and nearly every other major protest and organizing player in the game revolves around them. Now, their address is 900, uh, 1900 L Street in D.C., but that is also the address of the largest immigrant youth-led organization in the country. Want to guess where they get their funding? Spooky, dude. I'm going to say that one time and it won't be him. It'll be shocking. Uh, they also share an address with a group called Change to Win, who are affiliated with both the SEIU and the Teamsters. That is so convenient. They can all kibitz. But that doesn't even come close to the list of mainstream left-wing organizations that the Action Network is tied to. Their 2018 990 IRS form shows partnerships with, get this, the National Education Association, the Teachers Union, the largest union in the country, and the AFL-CIO, the largest federation of unions in the United States. Now I wonder how many police unions are part of the AFL-CIO. I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that none of them realize that they are unwittingly paying dues to an organization that is partnered with the Action Network, who is actively organizing events to defund the police. Try to noodle this one. The AFL-CIO is partnered with Action Network, who is defunding the police and also hosting petitions for the AFL-CIO to drop the police unions. Gee, that's weird. That's quite a conflict of interest, isn't it? All of this is happening at Action Network. And guess who announced just another major partnership with them? The DNC. 
Now I wonder if the DNC knows that the Action Network hosts an international Antifa defense fund. I'm totally kidding. Of course they know. Literally, all of the bases are covered through Action Network. Most of the protest street movements we see to this day are being organized through their site. Their partnerships, their ties to the largest unions in the country, as well as the DNC, prove that either the Democratic Party is either part of or at least condones what's going on. But I'm not even being close to being finished. If you look at the Action Network site, another big name jumps out. Multiple entries for organizing for action. And whose group is that? On that campaign, we tried something different. We had to because oh you had a candidate named Barack Obama. <laughs> so that this wasn't a top-down affair, but this was a bottom-up affair. And I couldn't be prouder of what you've done and everything that you yeah. continue to do. Because there are now 250 organizing for action chapters across the country. Okay, stop. Uh, do you remember when I was on Fox and I said organizing for America? He's controlling all the information. He will control the Democrats and the Democratic Party will be controlled by the streets. Remember? Oh, yeah, that's right. I was crazy. Organizing for Obama is now organizing for action. Right here. They've been building it from the beginning. Back then, Obama for America, supposed to be shuttered at the end of Obama's second term, told you it wouldn't be. Guess who won the 2016 election and then turned everything upside down? Now, it's organizing for action, relaunched, and their sites are, are targeted and have from day one directly on Donald Trump. Again, not a conspiracy theory. The media was reporting on this back in 2017. Obama is the only former president to remain in Washington, D.C. No one in the media thought it was weird. Really? No one in the media pointed out the fact that the former president was remaining to launch an all-out assault on his, uh, his successor. We know this now. Obama's little army even produced a training manual specifically on how to resist the Trump agenda. The former president. Oh, but Donald Trump's really gone off the norms, hasn't he? He's just changed everything. Oh, is it him? The manual describes in detail how organizers should flood events in red states to make it appear that Trump was more unpopular than he actually was. In fact, it calls for, quote, unfavorable exchanges caught on video. That was the goal, the goal to make Republicans, even in safe districts, second guess their support for the Trump agenda. Obama's group teamed up with Indivisible to produce this manual. The material was used in town hall meetings all over the country, sometimes devolving into intimidation and violence. Well, I just want you to know, they in this, they say the Tea Party was success. Good. Finally, somebody said it. And guess who cheered on individuals' campaign to resist Donald Trump? Yeah, it was the Action Network. Gang, we are so far behind. You have to get this message out to all of your friends because I'm going to show you it's like a calendar. It all culminates next month. As the founder of the Action Network recently said, quote, in some ways, we've just been road testing everything for two years, building up to this moment, end quote. The organization has been built and tested. The game fully kicks on November 3rd, and I can show you the future. They have planned for every step of, of what is coming, point by point, and I'll show it to you next. All right, I want to talk to you a little bit about Relief Factor. Relief Factor is something that I take three times a day. I take it in the morning, I take it with lunch, and then I take it at dinner, and it has changed me. I, I paint. Can you get a shot of the big painting on the wall? This is never so more appropriate than, than right now. The big painting of the big face on the wall <laughs> of government in bed with Twitter and Facebook. That's crazy talk. Yeah, really? Did that a couple of years ago. Um, anyway, I couldn't paint before because my hands hurt so badly I couldn't hold the paintbrush. Now I'm painting up a storm because I feel better, because I have my life back, because of Relief Factor. Just try it, 1995, just try it for three weeks, their quick start trial. If it doesn't work for you in three weeks, you don't see any change in three weeks, stop taking it. You're out 20 bucks. But 70% of the people who try it go on to order more because it works. Relief, relieffactor.com.
So Democrats and democratically funded Republicans at the Lincoln Project uh, wargamed four possible scenarios. They're all available now. You can read them yourself. Game one is an ambiguous result on election night. Game two, a clear Biden victory. Great. Game three, a clear Trump win. Game four, a narrow Biden win. Now, no matter what happens on November 3rd, the left is looking to make gains, and it would just go to show you the hypocrisy in the name of this document being the transition integrity. They have planned to do something with all of these scenarios. Even if it's a clear Trump, they're not interested in transition integrity. They either want to win and fundamentally change our country, or if they lose, they still plan on using everything in their disposal to change, fundamentally, our country. The inspirations for their plan should scare the heck out of everybody. It's mentioned on their very first page. Quote, the closest analogy may be the election of 1876, a time of extreme partisanship and rampant disenfranchisement where multiple states pro-offered uh, competing states of electors. And the election was only resolved through a grand political bargain days before the inauguration. Now, see if this sounds familiar. In 1876, Republicans controlled both the presidency and the Senate, but the Democrats had taken back the House. So on election night, the Republican candidate, Rutherford B. Hayes, had a slight electoral college victory with his opponent leading in the popular vote. In several states, the vote counts were highly disputed. What followed was the Compromise of 1877. Democrats agreed to concede, but only if Republicans would agree to end Reconstruction in the South. Hayes relented, becoming the president, but opening up Jim Crow laws in the South. Democrats doing what they do best, I guess. They are revealing their own racism and holding people down in their plan for the future. This is their inspiration. And it's not a strategy from what people think, uh, you know, people that think they're going to win. It, you don't come up with this. Before I go over the four scenarios, take a look at some of the things listed as things they are preparing for in advance. They are organizing a list of a thousand influencers to push the claim that Trump is trying to steal the election. Two, you can expect a heavy dose of Hollywood and social media on that. They're recruiting Republican moderates, the moderate governors, to form their own coalition. They are readying a capital strike and work stoppage to pressure companies. As I showed you earlier, the left has been busy building a network of street activists for years, so you're going to see all these groups spontaneously rise up. They plan to unleash them right after election. Now listen to this quote. Team Biden almost always called for and relied on mass protests to just demonstrate the public's commitment to a legitimate outcome. The possibility for violence will increase significantly. The classic leftist playbook. But look how they plan on framing it. Quote, President Trump and his more fervent supporters have every incentive to try to turn peaceful pro-Biden or anti-Trump protest violent in order to generate evidence that a Democratic victory is tantamount to mob rule. Oh, so they expect violence, but when it goes down, they're going to blame Trump agitators. In what world is this even believable? Who's been responsible for the violence over the past few months? Are we actually supposed to believe that the Tea Party will go undercover in black block and start chucking Molotov cocktails? As ridiculous as this may sound, something like it, that's exactly the story that they'll outline and they will try to reave, weave. The first war game resulted in an utter nightmare. This is the ambiguous result with both candidates declaring victory. If the, revolt, if the results show both Trump and Biden neck to neck, you can expect things to be seen that you've never seen before. Both candidates will declare victory. The Biden campaign immediately will deploy their list of 1,000 influencers to hit the social and mainstream media waves. Now, it doesn't mention that here, but how much you want to make a bet that people like me or Tucker Carlson will be heavily throttled or shadow banned by the mainstream media's social networks. They'll have a voice, but we won't. 
The Biden campaign then unleashes what they call their peaceful rallies. But as I showed you earlier in the document, they expect them to become violent. The left expects Trump to respond by federalizing the National Guard and invoking the Insurrection Act. Tell me, why would he have to do that if what they planned was peaceful? The game continues with a hypothetical scenario in Michigan where a Trump supporter destroys some ballots, tipping the state for the president. Because of that, the governor of Michigan hmm, decides to send pro-Biden delegates to Washington. So now we've got two things to note here. The use of the act of sabotage, something the right is rarely guilty of, but we can't say that about the left, and the state governor defying the results. I'm telling you, they're pulling every dirty trick in the arsenal. And this is scenario one. Scenario two, somewhat uneventful. A clear Biden victory. In other words, Biden wins in a blowout. The Democrats think that this is, if this happens, Trump will have no leverage to contest anything. It's actually kind of funny because you can see the bias from the Lincoln Project stooges sitting at the table. It actually includes Trump going to Mar-a-Lago to pursue murky overseas business deals. Uh, and then he's supposed to try to rob our treasury, I kid you not, and then launch MAGA TV. I'd like to remind uh, the left that the king of murky overseas business deal is Joe Biden. China, Ukraine, $3.5 million from a corrupt Moscow oligarch. Game three is what I think is most likely that we will see, a clear Trump win. The scenario assumes Trump takes an electoral college victory but loses the popular vote. This is clearly what Democrats think will happen. It's why they took inspiration from the election of 1876. Tell me if transition is what they're concerned about here. Right from the get out, the Biden campaign sends the masses out into the streets. Look how the left frames what happens. Quote, the Trump campaign planted agent pro provocateurs in the protests throughout the country to ensure those protests turned violent and helped further the narrative of a violent insurrection, end quote. Rioting and looting will com commence. Violence will ensue. And who will get the blame? You will. Get ready, because everything kicks off as planned on November 3rd. It's going to happen, one of these scenarios. The plan they appear to have uh, made is that, that um, Biden will concede, but then make a very public retraction. Quote, if capitalized on the public's outrage that for the first time in 20 years, a candidate lost the popular vote but won the Electoral College. Yeah, it's been happening for a while. 1876. This is key for later in the scenario. It has nothing to do with transition and integrity and everything to do with destroying our Constitution and the, the history and the norms of our country. The next stage in the plan has the Democrats leveraging their coalition of governors, immediately asking for recounts in multiple states. In some of those cases, the governors completely ignore the results and send Biden electors instead. This is turn one at the war game. At the end, this is what they list as what they can successfully cook up. Quote, at the end of the first turn, the country was in the midst of a full-blown constitutional crisis characterized by political chaos, widespread threats of violence, sporadic actual violence in the streets, and hostile, dangerous, highly partisan, and frequently unconstrained information and the media environment. In summation, absolute chaos. This is what they want to sow on election night, even though Trump has clearly won. But they offer a way out. I'll show you that way out. So great next. Let me tell you about uh, Goldline. The American Hotel and Lodging Company reported this week 74% of hotels may, off, may lay off more workers without another congressional stimulus deal. Nancy Pelosi won't leave. It won't let it leave the house. Um, that's not good. Disney World has fired, I think today or laid off 30,000 of their workers for the parks. That's not good. We're spending too much money. We're printing money. We've got chaos coming on the streets. What do you say you look into gold? <laughs> Please. What do you say you look into gold or silver and protect what you have? Somebody has to have something besides George Soros that they can rebuild the country with and re rebuild our lives with. Goldline has a new version of the $5 Liberty coin that I buy, and they're in stellar 
stellar condition. And uh, this is the last week that they're offering free silver with every MS62 $5 Liberty Coin order. If you don't know what that is, because I don't, uh, call them up. It's a great way to pick up some free silver along with your gold. The special ends Friday, so call Goldline today, 866-GOLDLINE. They're standing by for your call right now, 866-GOLDLINE. I would abandon Donald Trump and anybody, anyone, Ronald Reagan, that would set up a, a scenario where the other side clearly won. And then they said, we'll negotiate. The Biden campaign is doing it. They announced that they, in this war game, they convinced California, Oregon, and Washington to secede unless Congress agrees to fundamentally change the United States of America. This is their scenario for a clear win. This is their plan. Using that leverage, take a look at this insane list of demands. Give, give statehood to Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. Divide California into five states to more accurately represent its population in the center, uh, in the Senate. It's interesting, they, they don't request the same for Texas, and I wonder why. They require Supreme Court justices to retire at 70. Eliminate the Electoral College. So the Compromise of 1877 2.0, this is their plan if there is a clear Trump win to stop the violence in the streets. That is not an American tradition. This is insurrection. I, I, there, there's another, there's the fourth scenario, which is a narrow Biden loss that's even crazier and more bleak. Uh, all of them involve the military and the National Guard and it's um, sad, it's really sad. And perhaps we get what we deserve. But we are a good and noble and peaceful people. We believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We've built this country on those principles, and we have screwed it up from time to time. And we have done quite a number on it now because too many people care more about Frickin' Kardashians and Facebook than they do about the Constitution and the Republic. But this is our last call. And the reason why I share this is not to get you upset. I share this so you won't be surprised and you won't play into their hands. You can read this and you will watch it. You will watch it in real time. You will be able to tell your friends that don't know what's going on, Watch, they're going to start saying this tomorrow. They're going to do this. Please go to the website and read these documents yourself. I pray that this doesn't happen. But the track record that I have when we do our homework is pretty dead on. We'll have more on this on radio tomorrow, more even next week. Stay safe, stay calm, stay informed. Good night, America.